if you took Calc 1 anywhere else. Actually, I even think they covered this in Math 132, but let's assume you forgot all that, and I'm going to re review all of these formulas and where they come from. Um, so integration is, save this, um, polar differentiation. All right. Um, integration just means antiderivative. So that should be a review because I believe, again, everyone covered that. But integration just means antiderivative or you're using something with the antiderivative. There's two flavors of integration where it's um, definite integration and in indefinite integration. Indefinite integration is the antiderivative. That's what we're going to be going over today. So we're only going to be going over the antiderivative today. In this case, we're going over the antiderivative of, here, let's just use an example. Let's just say we're trying to find the antiderivative of x squared um, with respect to x. Now, let's go over this, this, what this notation means. Um, the derivative formula looks like this. It's like, what's the derivative of x squared? And you would say 2x. Okay, this thing right here, again, math's the language. We gotta learn how to translate it. This means to take the derivative of whatever's after this. Okay, for antiderivative, the notation is really weird. This and this mean the antiderivative of whatever's in the middle of it. Okay, they always put the dx last. You can kind of see, uh, you know, for over here, we're dividing by dx, which is, that means that's the derivative. This one, we're multiplying by dx. Antiderivative is the opposite of derivative. So you can kind of see why, they have that dx there. You don't need to worry about it, but just know that this, you'll never see this unless I make a mistake. You can't have something like this. There always has to be a dx there. It's the equivalent of saying, what's the derivative without having the divided by dx, okay? You need the dx in there. Um, they put the notation at the end. I don't know why they made it that way. It's confusing to students because they always just think, you know, sine of x squared. It's the sine of whatever's here. So then they think the antiderivative of this, and then they're always like, what, where's, what's the dx? Where does the dx go? The dx is actually part of the notation. It's just it like it surrounds it. It's kind of annoying and it, it gets people upset, um, but just know that's what that is. So it's got this, it's called an elongated S or a summa. You basically just, oops, didn't want to do that. You basically just do that. Um, and then the, the expression goes here, whatever the function is. Let's just put f of x here. And then there's a dx after it. It means take the antiderivative. Okay. Um, again, should be review. Let's see if there's questions. No. Okay. If I don't see your question, just chime in. If I'm going too fast, chime in. If you need anything, like I'm trying to make this as personalized as possible, just chime in. I do not take it offensively if I'm going too fast or whatever. I love this stuff. So sometimes I get super excited. Um, I'm sure you've had professors that go too fast. Just tell me to slow down, whatever. I'm not going to get offended. Um, please, please help me out. Rid of this. All right. So we're doing the antiderivative of this. The rule for it, I'm not going to spend too much time. Usually in class, I would, I would have you try to figure out the rule on your own. But the rule is whenever you take an antiderivative, of a power function. This is a power function because right up here we have a, a power is a, is a constant in this case and the variable is the base. Eventually we're gonna do something where it's something like, um, like two to the x. Two to the x is not the same as x squared, okay? The bases are different. This one has an x for an exponent. This one has a constant for an exponent, okay? So we are working on just the reverse power rule. This is a power, power expression right here. And what you basically do is you add one to the power, and then whatever that power is, you divide by that power. And then you always have to have a plus C. Okay, hopefully the plus C, hopefully you remember that. I guess I can explain it right now. Okay. This is equal to this. You need to know this formula. It's called reverse power rule or the power rule for integration. Um, but basically what you're doing is using this formula to figure out this antiderivative right here, okay? So in this case, the we're doing the antiderivative of x squared. You have to add one to the power, and then you're dividing by that power, okay? So you end up with x to the third over three plus c, okay? Always, always, always check to see if that's right. And the easiest way to check it is to do the derivative of your answer. 
So the derivative of x cubed over 3 plus c. Okay, you're going to use power rule on this. So you're going to bring the 3 down. You minus 1 from the power, so it's a 2 now. And then you're still dividing by 3. The derivative of a constant is 0, so you don't need to worry about that. Cancel, cancel, you're left with x squared, which is exactly what you started with up here. So that means your answer checks out. This is the right answer right here because you did the derivative and you got where you started, okay? There are infinitely many antiderivatives. It's called a general solution because the C could be anything, okay? If I put, instead of a C here, if I just put one, this would still work because the derivative is zero for one. If I put 10, it's still the same. If I put a billion, it's still gonna be zero, okay? So that C can be anything, okay? It could be three, negative three, it doesn't, doesn't matter. That C is needed every single time when you do an antiderivative, if you forget, then you're gonna lose a grade for that. It's gonna, to me, that would be a minor calc error because you're not understanding that the C is needed. It's called a constant of integration. Every time you take an antiderivative, a plus C is going to hop out every single time because the derivative of a constant is zero. It will always go away if you check your work, but you can't say that the antiderivative of this is equal to X cubed over three because it could be X cubed over three plus one. It could be anything. So you just do a plus C, it's called a general solution, okay? This reverse power rule works. Hold on, let me check the questions. This reverse power rule works for any n value except when n is equal to negative one. And I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm sure this is a review as well. But say I did, what is the antiderivative of one over x? Okay, you have to turn this into a power. So that's what I'm gonna do x to the negative one is the same thing as one over x. These are equivalent. Okay, now if you did reverse power rule on this, you're gonna end up with x to the negative one plus one divided by negative one plus one, because you divide by that power, plus c. But you should notice an issue here. Now you're dividing by zero. If you're dividing by zero, it's undefined. That's impossible, but the, this derivative works, or I'm sorry, this antiderivative exists is what I'm trying to say. This, this antiderivative does exist. This is saying it doesn't exist, but you can graph it out and see that the antiderivative exists. So what the heck is going on? Well, it actually defines a very new function, not a new function, but a, a new function for us anyway, um, in the fact that it's ln x plus c. Okay, ln x is defined as this antiderivative right here of one over x. Okay, so that's another formula that you're going to have to know. If it's 1 over x, anytime you have an x to the negative 1, that's when you need to know the ln x. And it's on the website. Oops. It's on the website, too, is one of the formulas you have to know. Again, if you forget it, it's fine. I might just remind you. But right here, this first one is reverse power rule. The second one is the 1 over x. Okay. The next formula is if there's a constant, you can pull the constant out. So if you see this third one right here, this third one right here, um, you can pull the constant out, which is kind of helpful at times. Uh, so say I had, let's just do an example problem here. Say I did, um, what is the antiderivative of four over X with respect to X? What you can do to make this easier, check this out, is you can pull the four out. So now you have one over X here, okay? Now this part right here, we know, is equal to ln x plus c. So now your final answer is four times ln x plus c, okay? Now, if you did the derivative of this, you would still get four over x. So you're gonna get four times one over x plus zero. This ends up being four over x, which is right here. So this checks out as the answer. So that's the constant multiple. You can pull the constant multiple out. It's really similar to derivatives. So say I was doing the derivative of 3x squared. It's the same as the 3 times the derivative of x squared. Okay, so this is going to be 3 times 2x, which is 6x. If you just pulled the 2 down here, you'd still get 6, whoops, x. That's embarrassing. 6x. Okay, so you can pull that constant out and you still get the same answer. You can't trick math if you're doing it right. Okay. So that's basically all of 411. It's using 
these formulas. This last one, it says plus or minus with this. You can just, you can distribute out the integral. That's basically what that means. You, people usually don't do this, but I figured you might see it in the book or something, might as well show you. So if you did the derivative of, um, I'm sorry, the antiderivative of x squared plus one dx, it's equal to the antiderivative of x squared plus the antiderivative of one. If you notice, I have the dx is there because this has to distribute to each of these. That's so sloppy, I'm sorry dx. And you'll get the same answer either way is equal to x cubed over 3 plus x plus c. Okay, you end up with the same answer. Just simplifies a little bit more. Usually people don't use it though, but I wrote it in just in case you see it somewhere. All right, is there any questions on 411? Okay, very basic. There shouldn't be that many problems on this. Where am I going? Because it's just very basic stuff. Yeah, there's only 15. Okay. Now let's go to 412. Four one two is basically the rest of the formulas, um, the antiderivative of a to the x, the antiderivative of e to the x, sine and cosine. It's all right there. Uh, make sure you memorize these formulas. Let's do some examples of these actually. So let's copy this. Okay, let's move over here. So using these formulas, by the way, if you ever want to know where these formulas come from, I have videos for that, but it's beyond the scope of the class, so you don't, don't really need to know where they come from. Just know how to use them. All right, so let's do let's, let's do an example problem. Let's do the antiderivative of 3 to the x. Okay, this one's exponential, so you need to use this formula right here. Okay, you cannot do reverse power rule on this. I see people do this where they, they add 1 to the power, or they do this, and they think this is correct. Do not do this. I don't think anything gets me more mad than this. It's an exponential function, so you cannot use reverse power rule because power rule only is for power functions. You have to use this thing right here. In this case, a is three. So basically what you're doing to solve this is just replacing all the a's with three. So this is gonna be equal to three to the x over ln three plus c, based on this right here. So I just replaced the a's with threes. It's not too bad. E to the x is interesting because it's the only function, well, it's only the only like base function besides zero that has an antiderivative that's itself. So the antiderivative is e to the x, well, plus a constant. Okay. The, anti the derivative of zero is zero. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Um, if you say you forgot this formula here, if you just started solving the problem, you'd get the same answer. So the, the antiderivative of e to the x, if you use this formula up here, is just gonna be e to the x over ln e plus c. Well, ln e is one, so you just end up with that e to the x plus c. So this one works. Okay, this one right here is just the reverse of what we're used to, okay? So if you do the derivative of something, like let's just say sine, you get cosine. So if you do the antiderivative, you'd go backwards, you'd, the antiderivative of cosine is sine plus c, sine x plus c. That's what this is. So it's the opposite of what you're used to for the sine and cosine. So that's 412. It's just those formulas. Questions on any of this? Lots of formulas. That's why I said if you forget one, just ask. Okay. Questions before we go to 413. 413 is the hardest section. All right, so here we go. Um, it's called integration by substitution. Okay, it's an integration technique where sometimes we can't use these fancy formulas. We can't use formulas like this at first, but if we kind of use a little bit of math, we can make it so we can use these formulas so it makes it a little bit easier. So the whole goal of integration by substitution substitution is to make it so you can use the formulas that we already have okay so it's called integration by substitution and the name is exactly what it says you, you have to use something we have to substitute something to make it so you can use those formulas so the first example we are going to oh by the way this is like a reverse chain rule kind of problem if you want to think of it that way so if you remember chain rule it's like almost chain rule in reverse 
Um, let's see here. What problem should I start with? Let's start with an easy one. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with uh, some number. Hold on. Number one. Let's do the antiderivative of 2x times x squared minus 1 uh, cubed with respect to x. Okay, there is no formula that works for this. I and mean, what you could do is if you expanded this out all the way and distributed, then you can use power rule. But right now we have a function 2x, oops, we have a function 2x times another function um, that's inside of another function. So it gets very, very complicated. There is no formula that we can use for this. So we need to rewrite this so that we can use a formula. Okay, step one, if you like steps, the... Um, Step one would be to figure out what your U is. We're gonna use U for this. They, sometimes they call it U substitution. And your U is always gonna be the most buried function, okay? The most buried function in this case would be this right here, X squared minus one, and it's inside of this cubed power, where this one's just inside of a first power. So the most buried one would be this X squared minus one. So I'm gonna write X squared minus one as your U. So step one is find U. Let's see, how can I write this? This is step, let's just do step one here. Um, yeah, let's do step one. Okay, step two. So again, the whole thing is about uh, substituting. So this is substituted for right here. So we're good with this one, check on this. But we still need to substitute for this and this. Okay, because right now our equation would look like this. It'd be two X times U Hold on, I don't want a pen. Times u to the third dx. Okay, but we need to substitute for everything. We still can't use any rules on this. Okay, so we need to substitute for 2x and dx. Well, the only way, and this is pretty clever, and this is not intuitive at all, so whoever came up with this is a genius. The only way to get a dx out of this is to do the derivative of this with respect to x, because now look, now we have a dx. So we're going to do the derivative here, which is equal to 2x. Okay. Now what we can do to solve for this dx is we're going to multiply both sides by dx. Okay, so this cancels. And now you're left with 2x dx, which is weird because that's exactly what we need over here. We need 2x dx. And 2x dx is equal to du. So all of that was just equal to du. So now what I can do is substitute in this du for what I underlined in blue right here. So now it's going to be u to the third times du. If you notice, now you can just use a formula. We can use reverse power rule on this. All right, so let's do that. Reverse power rule on this, the antiderivative with respect to u is going to be u to the fourth because you add one to the power and then divide it by that power plus c. However, you cannot leave your answer in terms like this, okay? You have to substitute back in your u for your final answer. So this right here has to go in for u. So now you end up with x squared minus 1 to the fourth power all over 4 plus c. And that ends up being your answer. But as you can see by all this work, it's crazy. Okay, not intuitive at all. You're going to have to practice these a lot. Well, some of you are. Um, so let's, let's check our work on this. Let's do the derivative of our answer here. So we're going to do the derivative of this answer. So it's chain rule. So you bring the 4 down. You minus 1 from the power. So that's a 3. You still have the divided by 4 here. Plus the derivative of, of a constant is C. Of, of C is 0. Okay. The 4s cancel. And you end up with x squared minus 1 cubed. Oops. What did I do? Oh, times 2x. That's embarrassing. Hold on, that's really embarrassing. Times 2x, because you have to do chain rule, plus the zero, wow. All right, this cancels here. The zeros cancel because you don't need it. And if you notice, you end up with this whole thing right here being equal to where you started. So that means this checks out as your answer and you know that it's correct. Okay, now that's a lot of steps. We're gonna do a ton of these. There's tons of practice ones for these too. Um, this is one of those things you can't really over practice on. Let's do a little bit more complicated. All right, let's go with uh, number two. 
let's go with the antiderivative of negative 2x times the square root of 9 minus x squared all over d or with respect to dx with respect to x but all right <clears throat> so we have something like this right here um what i like to do sometimes is or pretty much every time is i'm going to rewrite this so it's to the half power i want everything in powers because all my rules are power rules or reverse power rule so just rewriting it really quick Okay, now the first step was find your u. Okay, in this case, our u is gonna be equal to nine minus x squared. How do I know that? Because it's the most buried function. It's inside of this half power. 99 times out of 100, that's gonna end up being your u. So pretty much in this class, it's always gonna be the u is the most buried one. So we have something like that. We still need a negative two x dx as well. So we have to do the derivative of this to get the dx out of it. So we're gonna do the derivative with respect to x is equal to negative two x because the derivative of that is zero. The derivative of this is negative two x. Okay, we're gonna multiply both sides by dx because that's the whole thing you're trying to solve for. And what's nice about this is we're actually looking for negative 2x dx. By the way, they don't always work out this nice. I'm just starting with easier problems. We're going to get to harder problems eventually. So now if you rewrote this, it's going to be, whoops, let's rewrite it down here. It's going to be u to the one half power, because this is our u to the one half power. And then negative 2x dx is just equal to du. Okay, from here, now we have a, a rule that, or a, we can use a rule, a reverse power rule to solve this, where before this was too complicated to actually use reverse power rule. This one works. So now what you can do is you can add one to the power. So now you have one half plus one divided by one half plus one plus C. Okay, one half plus one is just three halves. And since you're dividing by three halves, you can multiply by the reciprocal. So you get two thirds u to the three halves, but u is equal to nine minus x squared. So I'm gonna put that back in there, three halves plus c, and you end up with your final answer. And if you do the derivative of this, you get where you started. All right, let's do another one. All right. Um, let's do, 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 okay, let's try this one. We're going to do the antiderivative of x times sine of x squared. In this case, our u would be x squared. Our du over dx is gonna be equal to 2x. So again, I should have wrote this down more clearly. This is step one, this is step two, okay? Find the u and then find the dx. And then step three is to substitute it out, but I'll write that in more detail in a bit. All right, this is gonna be multiplying by dx over here, okay? Cancel, cancel, all right. Now, if you notice up here, if we rewrote what we have, we would have sine of u. Okay, and now we need to substitute for x dx. This is where it gets a little bit trickier. The x dx we did not substitute for over here because we have two x dx. So what we need to do is divide by two. Okay, I'm gonna show that. So now we end up having x dx is equal to du over two. So now, here, let me, uh, I think I can highlight this. This x and this dx right here are gonna end up being du over two, okay? It's gonna end up being equal to du over two. So I'm gonna rewrite that, I'll do that in purple, to be du over two. Okay. 
Now, this is actually something we can find the antiderivative of. What I'm going to do first is pull the one half out. So this divided by two, I'm just going to pull that out in front, like I was talking about before. And then we have sine u du. Well, the antiderivative of sine is negative sine. So you end up with one half times negative sine of u plus c. You plug your u back in and you're gonna end up with negative one half cosine of x squared plus c. And then that's the final answer. And if you did the derivative of that, you should get where you started. All right, so breaking down the steps, one is find the u, two is find the dx, or anything else that you have to substitute for. Three is up here, you put everything back into the original, but you should only be in terms of u. Okay, if you notice, there's only u's here. If there's an x in there, you won't be able to do the antiderivative. Four is use the rules. Step four is use the rules. And then step five is substitute back in. Sub back in. But don't, don't leave your answer in terms of u. Make sure you use whatever your u is equal to.